Hey Bullfrog, it's time to draw with Miss Fleener again. In front of you, you see the supplies we need for today. We need two pieces of paper, white piece and a black piece preferably, but if you don't have those two colors, that's fine. You can use both white or you can just use notebook paper, but you do need two pieces. A pair of scissors, a black marker. It doesn't have to be a Sharpie, but we do need a black marker. Uh, it could also be a black crown or a black colored pencil if you don't have a marker. Some glue. I'm going to use a glue stick because it's quick and easy for this video, um, but if you have all you have is liquid glue, that's fine too. And something to color with, either markers, colored pencils, crayons. Alright, I've cleared my supplies and I'm going to start with the background. So I need my white piece of paper, turned tall like a building and my black marker. Now I'm going to show you how to do this just with marker and crayons, but if you want to um, be a little more adventurous, after I get through this first drawing part, I am going to show you how you could do this with um, a white piece of paper and a white crayon and some watercolor paints. So if you have watercolor paints and your parents' permission to use them, then you are welcome to skip past this part, go right to that part, and use watercolor instead. If you do not, don't worry, I'm going to show you what to do right now. So I have my paper turned tall like a building, and I'm going to be drawing a spider web. Hopefully you watched the video of the facts about spiders first. Um, I, find, I found that to be very interesting, and I hope you did too. So to make our spider web, we're going to start with a line down the center. Then we're going to cross that line. And then we're going to draw a big X. Now our goal is to use this entire piece of paper. So notice my lines are running all the way to the edge of the paper. They're falling off the edge and they all cross right here in the center. Now I'm going to start with the cross pieces and I'm going to need to turn my paper as I do this. So I'm going to start in the middle and it's a curved line so I'm bumping up. Turn my paper and I'm going to keep going all the way around. When I get the first ring done, I'm going to do another until I work my way all the way out to the edges. All right, now that I have all of my rings on my web, I'm actually thinking I want to add one more right there. All right, I'm going to put my black marker up and I'm going to get my crayons. And I want a lot of color to this spider web, so I'm going to color these different spots. Lots of different colors. Now, when you're trying to get someone to view your artwork, you want them to see the whole piece of work. So, one way that you can get their eye to move around the pain, the artwork, I was going to say painting, we're not painting right now, is by using the same color in multiple locations. So, while I still have this sea green out. I'm going to use it in a few different places. I can always come back to it if I want to add more, but I'm saving time by doing a few spots at once instead of coloring one 
and then maybe deciding later I want to color another one, and then later doing another one. We've been really good about the drawing part of the assignments that we're turning in, but we even ha either haven't been coloring our artwork or our, our, our coloring has not been near as good as our drawing. So I'm going to start being um, more picky about what you turn in that's colored. I want to make sure that there are no peepers peeking through, so no big white spots and that you're trying to stay in your lines best you can and that you don't or if you're coloring with crown or colored pencil you want to apply some pressure to those things so you get these bold bright colors instead of these light kind of washed out colors that don't really translate very well when you take a picture of your assignment and turn it in now so far, I have a sea foam in this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Oh, I don't have one here yet. So I'm going to pick a part to color in this one. I don't have to do it that way, but it was working out. I'm going to go with that pattern. I just want to see a lot of colors in your spider web. I think I'll get this very center one. All right, and now I can switch colors. I'm gonna let you do some coloring on that, um, and then I'm going to show anyone that wants to use the watercolor how to use that. So if you are not painting with watercolors, then you can skip over this part of the video. All right, so if you are gonna do your spider web using watercolors, you're gonna draw with a white crayon. I know it sounds crazy on a white piece of paper, but it, the paint will not stick to the wax and the web will show up when you actually go to do the painting part. So I'm going to draw with a white crayon. I'm going to use my watercolors, a cup of water, and a paintbrush, and my white piece of paper. If you don't have a white piece of paper, notebook paper will work just fine too. Alright, I've moved my supplies off my paper and I am now going to get started on drawing. And it's going to look exactly the same as the one I drew in black marker, but I'm just using the white crayon. So if um, you're having trouble following along, you might go back to the beginning where I draw with the black crayon, check that out, and then uh, skip forward to the painting part. So I'm going to color really waxy when I do this. So notice I'm going back and forth over a spot a couple times before I creep down any further. I'm going to draw a straight line down the middle. One straight across horizontally. And I'm going all the way to the end of the page. And then I'm going to draw an X. And I want them all to cross in the middle. So my X needs to go from corner to corner. And then for the rings, I'm going to draw a curved line, and I'm going to turn my paper as I go along. So again, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back towards the beginning of the video and check out the one I drew in black, and just follow along with that one but with your white crown on your white paper. All right, now that I've got all my white lines done, I'm ready to start painting. And I want to use a lot of different colors on this. Just whatever colors I decide I like. But I should be able to paint right over top of my white lines. And my spider web will begin to show up. And I'm going to keep painting on this until 
until I have the whole thing painted. So I don't want to leave any white paper. The only white thing left on here should be my web. The awesome thing about watercolor is if you paint fast enough, then you can get your colors to mix on the paper, kind of blend together, creates a cool look. Alright, I have finished with my background, so whether you colored and you have black lines or whether you painted and you have white lines, you should have a spider, a very colorful spider web for a background. I'm going to pick that up and set that aside to work on my spider. So I am going to take my black piece of paper here, and I don't need the whole thing, so I just picked up a scrap I had from something else that we did. My White crown has broken, but it still works, so let's get rid of that other half. And I am going to start by drawing an oval for the body. And then I'm going to give it a circle for a head. And then I'm going to do the legs in two parts, because I want them to look like they're bent. So I'm going to draw the oval, and then I'm going to draw another oval to connect it. I'm going to do two up, and then I'm going to do two down. Now if you want your spider to look different than my spider, by all means, draw a different spider. I am open to seeing your creativity. And spiders have eight legs. So we want to make sure that we draw enough. Alright, now when I go to cut my spider out, I'm not going to cut every single line here. I'm actually going to just cut around the outside of the lines. I'm going to stick this in my way. Don't need that. So here, I'm going to follow along the outside of the leg. I'm not going to follow that oval necessarily. And I'll get in that small space in a minute. I'm going to get some of the big bulky paper out of the way first. Now we should have a clean side because we didn't draw anything on the other side of this paper. Now, I did forget to mention, if you're not using a black piece of paper and you drew your spider on a white piece of paper, you want to color your spider black before you cut it out. It'll make life so much easier for coloring. You can do it the other way. It's just hard to hold these tiny little legs and color them black. So I recommend that you color and then cut if you do not have a black piece of paper. So all of these lines I have on the back here, this is going to be my ugly side. And that's the side I'm going to put the glue on. I just have to have so many legs. Just cut away over here. Snip, snip. 
turn in my slider, not my scissors, because I don't want my scissors to point towards me. That wouldn't be very safe. If you're having trouble co cutting around these legs, you might enlist some help. So you could ask somebody to help you cut this out. If there's not anybody around, that's okay. Just try your best. If you cut a leg off, or the head, no worries. We'll just glue them back on and we go to glue it to the spider web. Almost there. Alright, that was the last of it. Now I need to bring my background back in. I'm going to get my spider glued to it. Now, I could put glue all over the back of this and just glue them down flat. Or, if I want him to have a little bit of three dimension to him, I can fold him in half. If I want him to kind of look like he's popping off the page. And then I'm going to bend his legs where they connect. Actually, I want to bend them the other way. Alright, now I'm going to put the glue. If I can get it open. Just on the legs. If you're working with a glue stick, Get a lot on there and work fast because glue sticks dry fast and they don't stick very well unless you got a lot on there. If you're using liquid glue, a dot a dot, not a lot. A little goes a long way basically. Alright, so I've got my spider here. He's got glue on his legs. I'm going to find a good spot to put him or her. Maybe it's a girl spider. And I'm only going to push down on the legs. And it kind of looks like he's popping off the page a little because he's got that little bump right there. Alright, so we have got our spider all glued down, ready to go. Don't forget to take a picture and upload it in the classwork for me to see and give you credit. Thanks for joining me.